to understand about the mind of Deborah Wessel or Deborah Weiss, Shalom Allen, Shalom Weiss, Shalom White, whatever it is she wants to be called, when you have to understand her in the 13 year grift that has been going on, you all you have to do is just go to the messianic hall of shame.org and I will leave a link in this video. And then you will see 13 years of testimony. And if you want to begin at the very beginning, this is the very first video that I did when I started investigating the Hallelujah Scriptures. And today we're going to be adding all of the documents that I have been submitted to the SFO. We're going to submit all of this to this website. Everybody can download this. Everybody can see the account numbers. Everybody can see everything that has to do with them. This is where it began. And this was a two-hour testimony of very evil people that are doing very evil things things to people. Deborah Wessel has been attacking people for years and years. Now, this is very interesting because we know that people of our creator have kind of a code of ethics. We know that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are to treat our neighbor as we want to be treated. We're, we're supposed to love our brothers. We're supposed to forgive our brothers. We're supposed to be kind. We're supposed to be gentle. We're supposed to be everything that Deborah Weiss, Wessel, is not. She is not a person of our creator. You can't do the things that she has done to the backs of people and say that you are part of our creator. Now, we have them stealing gold. We have them stealing silver. We have them calling CPS on families. We have them calling cops on people. We have tons and tons and tons of information on this site. And if you want to get the full lowdown, you need to go to the site. On this, you will find things like this. The Hallelujah Scriptures 12-year run of terror. The witness testimony of Lance and Tracy. This is where Deborah Weiss destroyed this family's life and attacked them viciously for years because they had questions about her ethics and about her bookkeeping, about her style. Anybody ever that questions anything against these people end up getting annihilated. This right here, evidence entry, the racketeering charge against Hallelujah Scriptures. The reason the Messianic Hall of Shame.org lives is because they went and created the Messianic Hall of Shame.com and they slandered righteous people for years and years and years. She lied about them. This site is truth. There's no lies on this. This is what they do and if you want to understand them, and I know I put eight, a lot of people are coming to these videos because of the nine part mini series of exposure that I put all over YouTube. But these videos on this site have all been censored by the Hallelujah Scripture grifters. Deborah Wessel went through and when we had two strikes on all of our channels, she went and struck three channels with two strikes that she got for copyright. And then she has been trying to get these channels taken down for weeks, months on end. All of these videos are censored things that she did not want exposed. And this was the beginning of the investigation. Now, as we get into number one, two, three, four, and five of the expose, this is the absolute proof. This is the absolute proof of a con job. This is the absolute proof of them stealing money. This is an absolute proof of them not having orphans, widows, or lepers. And you guys will have all of this here and all of this will be updated as we go. This list, these are all the same people right here. Shalom Weiss is the same as uh, Deborah Allen or Deborah Wessel or Shalom White. All of these names are their pseudonyms, their aliases that they have been hiding under for 13 years as they do their evil over in New Zealand. Now, I want to take us over to a couple of comments because I'd like to reply to them. And my apologies for not replying to them in writing right now. I will reply to them in a bit, but I want to go over them so that we have this on video so that you guys can, um, we can talk about this as a group, right? None of this stuff should be swept under the rug. I am an open book. Last night, I had the very first person that came with a fake YouTube channel and said he had an orphanage in South Africa and how the scriptures had um, helped them. I said, great, send me your checks, send me the deposits, send me your orphanage name and give me a telephone number and a time that I can call you. Crickets, right? I said, congratulations, you would be the first. 
And he was the first. I have never found an orphanage. I have never found anybody that the Hallelujah Scriptures has helped. Now, I've seen their bank accounts. I've, I've researched this. Guys, I've been researching this for the last three to four months on this nonstop. Now, let's go over some of these. Um, and I've been talking to Kelly off on, on email as well. And so she, she got a lot of these questions answered. And I sent her over to the Messianic Hall of Shame.org. But I want to go over them for everybody out there. Let's, let's see what she said. Shalom. I'm not ignoring the warning, but I have never paid for a CD, all CDs I have received for free when donating for the physical book. I don't see an issue paying for a physical book when we still have to pay the same or more for every other physical book. I'm pretty sure they already have it online on PDF. However, if we want a physical copy, it's cheaper to donate than to print it out. Okay, that is true. It is cheaper to um, um, donate than it is to print it out, right? And, and the, that's the only way you can get a scriptures from the Hallelujah Scriptures is what they call donating. In the real world, they call that a sale, right? They call that a receipt, an invoice. You would you would buy something. In the world of Hallelujah Scriptures where everything is opposite of what they say, um, it's a, all you're doing is donating. Call it what you want, okay? They do not have a PDF online. They cannot have a PDF online because they stole the, two, the 1998 Institute for Scripture Research copy. They will never have a digital copy because they will get annihilated by the folks over at the ISR because the ISR does have the copyright and they do it. So um, as far as the CDs go, she does give a lot of the CDs away as um, gifts inside of the stuff. You know, they'll give them, a, they'll sell a Bible, they'll throw a CD in. Um, that is that is all true, but they do not have an online PDF. Let's continue on with this. Do you have another account or is someone uploading your videos? I was watching the other channel, but just saw that you said your email, so we'll watch it here. Um, I have a bunch of different channels. I'm also on 153news.net. We have a Rumble channel. We have an Odyssey channel. Um, we have a lot of channels. Between YouTube, we have 30-some thousand subs somewhere out there. Um, and um, you know, all of my channels are on the fence right now because the Hallelujah Scriptures has us copyright struck until... Um, somewhere in at the end of January or February, somewhere in there. So that'll be done. Let's continue on. Cash converters. And this now we're starting to talk about some of these things that were in New Zealand. And as I presented this, I did not research every line item thing. Um, I do have a brother in New Zealand now who is feeding me a tremendous amount of information on all of this stuff and, and has opened our eyes. But I really appreciate it. Like when Kelly goes here or other people are investigating this as well. Guys, this is an open book for investigation. This is a criminal enterprise that has been doing this supposedly publicly promoting their free Bibles free and, and all of their, their gifts to the orphans, widows, and lepers. Um, so it, when you guys investigate this, it really helps me out. When you guys ask questions, I'm always here to answer questions. When If anyone ever came forward and said, I have an orphanage, a real orphanage, I am totally... in. Uh, open to looking into this. I really want to find this orphanage. It should be very, very easy because I have all the bank statements for several of their accounts for a, a good solid chunk of a year. There has never been anything there. There are no orphans, widows, and lepers. And we will get into some of the questions Kelly had on this. Okay. So one of the things that she had um, that she did that um, Deborah spends a tremendous amount of money on is the cash converters, right? And, and this is the second person that said cash converters is a pawn shop. You can buy items that people have sold. You can also borrow cash in high interest or borrow cash using your belongings as collateral. And another brother was talking about him that this is where you would buy gold as well. You could definitely buy little chunks of gold if they had gold on somebody pawn their gold. Um, so that is that is a very good thought. Now, continue on. Miter 10 is a hardware store. Just a thought. What if the food pharma is for people in need? I don't believe, but we should be using pharma, but you can purchase bandages, etc., from pharmacies. Could be putting kits together for people. Are there items on the milk pool supply website that could be used in the end times preparation? Still watching, haven't finished yet. Okay, thank you for the information on the Miter 10. Um, I did not know that. So it is a hardware store. That is very, very good to know. Um, and then her question is, what if the food farm is for people in need? That is a very, very good question. And people should ask that question. The advantage that I have, I guess, over everybody else is that I have investigated 13 years of boneyards of people that have been manipulated, owned, and destroyed. One of the MOs of Deborah Weiss is that she basically cuts off the lives of the people that she has shipping books. Like she will inundate them and confuse them and throw in so much stuff and 
I have accounts of people crying more than once that Deborah Wessel has made people cry. And everybody who has encountered Deborah Wessel, so she will, she will hire these people in and not give them any payroll. Then she will say, I am giving you a gift and you will end up with anywhere from, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 a month, depending on what it is. All of the mules, the people that she starts off and use, she pays them off right out of the gate, gives them a little bit of money to get them caught, to basically get them caught in the trap. And then she suckers them in and they ship their Bibles for absolutely free. There is no payroll, but there is tax evasion because when they get their money, there's there's no there's no employees. So instead of her having, you're, you're not supposed to have employees like this. What she's doing is illegal, um, completely illegal. So let's continue on. Um, could she be putting kits together for people? No. After 13 years of investigations, watching this woman, the people that she hurts the most are the poor. There's absolutely no way she is taking her hard earned grifted cash and buying anything useful. This, she's buying her lifestyle. And I, and I can prove that over and over and over. Okay, let's continue on. Um, 2429, I looked up uh, New World Op Apotiki. Apotiki is a location in New Zealand and New World is an online grocery store. And we saw that as well. And for those who, who are interested in that, um, hold on here. I was trying to get that. Okay, um, 127, she said, Gary Johnson, am I right? The paperwork is one of the earlier videos for him did not say Australia. I am in Australia. I would thought I would notice. So I looked up the postcard 6929. It is located in Western Australia. Or should I say um, WA, not NA? Possible for a typing error or completely fictional? Very interesting point on that. 705, it appears that Mistress Lady Alana in New Zealand is an escort service. This is the fourth person who has pointed this out. I did not know what this was and I had to go back and investigate. And we're going to go look at that at the end of this video and see exactly what this is because we've had four witnesses that have told me exactly where this is and what this is and I guess prostitution in New Zealand is legal so you just it, and she she paid for an hour she Deborah Wessel paid for an hour of a Dama matrix to I don't know to beat her or something I don't know what exactly she would have done with the Dama matrix other than that okay so let's take a look at that I had a look at the knife shop. They do sell some things one might use for prep, pocket knife, axe hunting. Yeah, and these people are completely prepping, right? Deborah Wessel and, and Ken think the end of the world was, was come, it's gone. They think they're going to be the last people standing. And they've been supplying up. They've been stocking up. And what you're seeing is them basically living a very frivolous lifestyle, buying whatever it is they want to do all over at that. All right, let's take a look at this as well. It looks like there's a reply there, but there's no reply. Um, had a look at Countdown. It's a grocery store, okay? And so um, I need to, on some of this, um, I, I was under assumption it was a pharmacy grocery store. And so when Kelly talked about this, I went and looked at it again. And she's right. It is a, simply a grocery store. So instead of, um, Deborah Wessel does buy a lot of pharmaceuticals. We've seen that from other pharmacies that she had. But the um, countdown is a grocery store. So she's buying enormous amounts of food. She's also buying enormous amounts of um, organic stuff. Like this is the life to live. Okay, continuing on. Bunnings is also a hardware store. They sell everything. Plants, outdoor furniture, camping gear, building supplies, wood, fencing, kitchens, toilets, plant, paint, etc. Right? They're, yes, they're, they're, they're buying stuff for their house. This is what they're buying. Um, sea breeze might be screen printing, t-shirts, etc. Culinary council appears to be hospitality equipment. Um, strand bags, sell handbags, backpacks, suitcases. One gentleman was talking, a brother was talking that with the amount of food that she is buying, she has to be opening a restaurant. And I don't think she would be doing that, but that could very well be an answer to the money embezzlement. Although I, she's more of a fake doctor. She goes by doctor, Dr. Shalom. Um, and so... Who knows what she has going on there? All right, let's continue on this. Then she says this. Um, 1029, you might want to take back that she's spending enormous amounts of money on drugs because Countdown is a supermarket. That means it's like Walmart, except you just usually food and a few thing, little things like kettle, toaster, basic medications, Panadol, uh, whatever that is, paracetamol, etc. Just basic stuff. The amount of money should would be on food. Um, Okay, thank you very, very much. And yes, yeah, so I do want to correct that. Um, it's, I would should say it's enormous 
amounts of food. Enormous. Who who knows? And it's very it's high ender stuff. It is what it would be. You know, if you're buying stuff for the homeless, you'd be buying giant bags of rice and beans and things of that nature. Um, but you know, th those are great questions. Okay, and then we have Aussie Bob who's in here. And he says, look at the CWH ones though. That's the chemist warehouse. Also the $600 on the Dama Matrix hooker. Mate, I've lived in New Zealand. Might want to look again. Um, and then uh, then he went again. Mate, she spent $600 on a Dama Matrix prostitute. That's not spending enormous amounts of money. The plot thickens. And indeed it does. And as we get to thinking about these kind of actions that this woman would have as she pretends to be a child of the most high, this is really getting bizarre. Okay, the bay milking could be for water tanks, garden watering, etc. I was wrong on the other video though about Gary in Australia. It does say in the vid, in this vid, and it's possibly someone might mistake a handwritten W for an N. No, the bay milking stuff, we, we looked at that. We saw it at first. We thought that she might have a farm to begin with. And then we started looking through all the stuff. We have witness statements that said, I can't remember the year, but Deborah Wessel had a grandchild that died in her pool um, many years back. And so she does have a pool and they do have a fifth wheel. They have a, they have a big RV um, as well, a big, a big one, a uh, nice one. And so let's continue on. Um, I don't know if she says it's blurry on her phone. Just change the resolution on that. That should do the trick. Again, 406, need to take back because she's spending money on drugs as is a grocery store. I acknowledge that. It is definitely a grocery store. Um, I will take that back. All right, so here she goes again. Para Rubber sells plastic swimming pools, pool flotation toys, but also sells rubber mattresses. If someone wanted to put a mattress to fit the back of a car. The To The Birds one is a woman's clothing store. So far, everything I have seen except for the escort service could be used in helping families, even including repairing someone's car, buying clothing, stocking up on food, water tanks, and ve watering veggie gardens. I can understand having money set aside to buy a property. Why would a woman in New Zealand need a house in America? Which also fits the description of the house offered for believers to go for safety, is literally wondering if you have given out the exact address of the place people will go to live for the coming chaos. Even buying, even buying someone a bike could be needed. You haven't linked the receipt of, with 488 to any other businesses. Presuming you have account numbers backing that it's actually for the businesses. The other issue is the old woman. Have you contacted anyone of the woman's family to check any of this? Not holding on to any belief or to trust anyone. But to me, all the purchases I can fully understand needing to be spent, except the escort, if that's what it is, stationary, Skype, a backpack, even the service of the vehicle being used to drop off food for people. So let's start this one on um, everything. Um, you're right. Everything could possibly, if this was the heart of a servant of our creator, it is absolutely possible that they could be buying really high-end organic stuff and really cool stuff and awesome stuff um, for the homeless and things of that nature. Knowing this woman and knowing her buying fashions and knowing witness statements of at least 15 people over the last 13 years this is not the woman. She has the heart of stone and she the last thing is she going to do is give away her money. All she cares about is money, money, money. When we talk about the hands that love, we're talking about the hands that love money, right? That's what this woman loves. Um, so yeah, those are all good things, but this is why people need to go to the Messianic Hall of Shame and spend a few hours watching over the videos. You could literally spend probably an entire day getting backfilled with this information if you so choose because there is a historical record of everything and I've laid this out very very good so yes very very good very good comments on this did you uh she replied back okay do you live in New Zealand so this is Aussie Bob I live in Tape Puke I don't know that follow the trail mate she's living on the road helping families you say with organics and countdown spendings like that I don't think so why wouldn't he operate out of New Zealand bank account if doing that? Write it off as tax deductibles in New Zealand. I'm sorry, I think you're wrong. She hits the New World Countdown and other specialty food stores all in one day for crazy amounts of money. 300, 400, again, follow the trail. Why spend 391 at the New World Optiki on food, then drive to Wakatane, 20 minute drive away, but more $400 food at Countdown, then go to the competitor New World and spend the same, then drive to Taranga, 40 minutes from Wakatane, rinse and repeat. I live in a small country of 5 million people. It's very easy to see the trail of where she's going and where she's going. To any other normie or someone who doesn't live here in New Zealand wouldn't see it. I am also seeing no petrol charges. She could be buying prepaid visas at Countdown, etc. using that for gas petrol. 
And then he continued on. He goes, do you have any ideas why she, why she would spend $600, American, mind you, at cash converters here in Taronga, New Zealand? It's a pawnbroker. By the way, selling secondhand goods. Maybe she's buying a needy family something secondhand for 600 bucks or more like gold and jewelry. Okay, let's continue on with this. So she continued on. She goes, Fast Mail Party LTD is an internet provider in Australia, possibly for emails for the Australian shipper. And then uh, it, ap it appears that peace and plenty is accommodation right on the water. That sounds uh, an inn. That sounds like a, uh, a great place to stay, right? So yeah, I don't know if maybe she housed a bunch of homeless people in a, a nice expensive place. Okay, let's continue on with Aussie Bob's here. Hey, Jason, you wouldn't have any more recent statements at all. If you could, please email me. I'll reach out to SFO Serious Fraud Office in New Zealand. They are interested in investigating. I'll CC you in the email thread. He did that, and I also put my own thing into the SFO, and um, I, I got emails into this, so we, we have all that. Okay, continue on. Sent back a few emails, mate. Understand the time differences. If you could read, be great. Yeah, brother. Um, I'm just real bad at, at getting back to this. Let's continue in on this, what he says. Been in Wakatane. Oh, that's close to me. That's another health food shop. Another $400. Wowzers. Look in the pattern over the month. She goes between Taranga, Wakatane, and Opotiki. Now I understand Opotiki, nice, quiet, rural town. A lot of people. Freedom camp there. You can freedom camps three days a time in your car, RV, caravans if you're traveling a lot. Of gray, nomads, hippies, likes live there this permanently. I'm not seeing any household bills, electric, gas, petrol, Wi-Fi bill. I have a sneaky suspicion she's living out of an RV caravan, something mobile. And honestly, if that's the best way to love that, loathe that dodgy lifestyle here in New Zealand. We are a small island of country of 5 million people. There's, there's not a lot of places to hide unless you have a camper van, move around constantly. And who would think, none the wiser, oh, here, just an American lady traveling around New Zealand. Hmm. I know you hate looking at those statements, J-Boss, but to me, it's the smoking gun. If you want her arrested in, here in New Zealand, I can easily see the pattern and where they are frequenting, visiting. I'm 90% certain for them is Opotik, Toki. Lovely to camp there. And then they hit Wakatane, then Taranga, and back again. There's actual no actual living costs. That shows me she's living on the road. And that is very interesting. Um, I believe that is true. There is witness statements that says I, literally like 10... 12 years ago, um, there was an ordeal with their RV where they tried to destroy a family over the whole RV thing where they had the family put the RV in their name because they didn't have licenses and they didn't have any registration. So I don't know if now they have licenses and registrations, but like 11 years ago, they were driving illegally all through New Zealand um, on another lady's registration and um, that became a huge thing. Um, yeah, there, there's, there's some very interesting stuff and let's continue on with him. Ben Inn is kind of like another expensive health food shop. They also sell a lot of home brewing equipment stuff. Is she an alcoholic? Like to drink. That could explain the Ben Inn charges. Oh, they also sell like bulk Indian spices of the like. Expensive nuts, and grains, etc. Yeah, I don't know if she's an alcoholic. I don't know any of this. I didn't know that she would hire a Dama Matrix either. I don't think anybody knows who they are dealing with. And when you see the money laundering and the extortion and the evil this woman does, you definitely don't know her. Okay, let's continue on. Also, re remember, these statements are American, right? Your money is worth way more to our New Zealand. So a lot of these $400 charges, et cetera, at the grocery store, expensive health food shops would be around $650 New Zealand. Holy heck, I just only thought of that. So that's crazy that um, $400 is worth $650 US. So she's really, really getting a great, a great deal on this stuff. And then he also says, I also just thought, I seen your gold and silver video, them buying up gold and silver. That kind of explains the cash converters pawn broker charge of $600. That's about a thousand US. Mate, she'd be buying gold and silver from the pawn broker. I guarantee it. And that could very well be. I did find her, we did find where she sold her gold in the States and they, she trans, they, they basically wire fraud. They wire frauded it up. I covered that. I think it's section nine of the um, Hallelujah Scriptures exposing and so, yeah, we, we know of all this. Okay, let's continue on. Um, Been in motel. Been in is in a motel. It's another expensive health food shop. I'm seeing the pattern here. She lives in an RV camper 95% of the time. As where she, as, as look as where she goes, Apotiki, Opo, Wakatane, Toranga, Mount Mangani, part of Toranga, back to Apotiki, same pattern every month. Sometimes ventures out to Rot Roturaga, but initially staying within the BOP, 
uh, which is the Bay of Plenty, especially on the 5th, 4th, 5-4, 2022. 250 at Burns Co., that's an RV shop. They install like solar panels and deal with 12-volt electrical system batteries. They are all American transactions to write. So realistically, a $400 a food shop is like $600 here in New Zealand. Um, here it is. Just worked out also, this is American currency to correct. Yes. So realistically, all these 300 to 400, 500 New Zealand charges are way more than I'm thinking. $400 charge to New Zealand is 600 plus. So add 20% on all these charges. Sheesh. Or am I wrong here? I, I think he's right. There is a... I mean, if, if that's the way the, the U.S. dollar is worth a lot more than New Zealand stuff, yeah, she's making way more money. So, sorry, he said she's American, but she's not. She, yeah, and so you said down there, um, uh, Nicole, is, uh, you said she's American. She's not. She, she is from New Zealand? Yeah, she's from New Zealand. And so she's not an American. She's using Americans' IDs, um, and she, she's just using them, the Americans is all she's doing. Um, the entire and she what's funny is she hates western people and she, she complains about them all the time how cheap they are there's literally emails in there about how cheap the the westerns are but it, like most of their money comes out of north america that that's the crazy stuff all right here it is um he says uh des roly te puke that's a shop in my town i live in te puke oh another health food shop holy heck i can't keep up with all this yeah i can't either um lowe's engine hire that's an equipment hire place she's building something like, say, if you want to build a fence or need a drill, but don't want to buy one, can hire one. Okay, so she's, uh, that's interesting. Providence Pan, another health food specialty shop. 516. Um, countdown, countdown, countdown. New Zealand big supermarket. $700 American in one day. That's what, that's what $1,100 roughly New Zealand on food in one day. There's always like three to four day gaps sometimes in spendings. I'm 95% certain she's traveling, living out an RV camper van. I believe that as true as well. Okay, then uh, 1041, the steel shop Wackatane. That's a chainsaw stop. She bought a chainsaw. Hmm, connect the dots here. Higher pool than steel shop. She's building something. Has some rural land, I bet, out at Pulpatiki or Apotiki surrounds. Okay. Let's continue on, and this is his final one. So at 5 2022 at 10 $580 with their drawl was for the Cope Opio. That's a doctor, medical center, mate. That's her doctor. Bam. So we have her doctor as well, and he, he, we got a map to her actual doctor. Now, this is where I want to take us into a, um, just a question, right? I, I don't know what to make of this, but... As we're investigating evil people, and we don't know who the evil people are, I would like to point out that at 310, on, on 310 2022, that she she paid Mistress Elena. And um, this is a, this was, it came out of a, uh, is this is this credit card or is this PayPal? It actually was going to a credit card, but then it, it, she didn't have the funds in the account and it came out of PayPal. She went through PayPal. She didn't have the funds in PayPal, so it came out of the Okay, so because she did not have the funds in PayPal, this charge for this, this Mistress Alana came out and she spent $504.99. Now, if that New Zealand money rate is like it is, then that's about eight or 900 US dollars. And so that would give us a couple of hours at one of these places. Now, again, um, I'm keeping this as, as cling as I could possibly keep it, but because the prostitution is legal in New Zealand, there's all these Mistress Lady Alana. They are Dama Matrixes. They, New Zealand is full of these women, I guess, dressed up in leathers that are beating up people with a whip. Um, and so this goes in again to who is this woman? Who is Deborah Weiss or Deborah Wessel? This this smiling face with a Yahoo hat on um, that claims. And if you guys, another lie that she's told everybody is she's like, "Oh, I have a vow. I can never, I can never put my picture out anywhere." Well, she's a liar there too because you're seeing a picture of her. This is her. This is who needs to be in orange jumpsuits and who needs to return all this land and money and all of this stuff back to the people and for anybody that has encountered deborah wessel aka shalom you guys know exactly what i'm talking about she is a very very evil woman and if you don't if you have any questions
Guys, go to the Messianic Hall of Shame. Spend a couple of hours in here and go over this investigation. I put this investigation together as an affidavit to send her to the criminal places that need to be taking care of this. We took the first step yesterday. I took the first step yesterday. Everything is I because I am the one responsible for this. I went and sent her in to the SFO. This is her fraud number, CON011149. If the SFO doesn't want anything of this, and I sent the SFO everything that I have that's not been redacted, that doesn't have things blanked out, it has the full cahoot, it has everything. This is the crime that we have. If the SFO doesn't want this, I have four other agencies that I can attempt to get this to in New Zealand before I start to take this over to the Americas. And I'm working on the Americas and we're doing a little bit different because I'm putting together a legal affidavit that will possibly be used to bring this woman down. One way or another, this has to stop. As people of YAH, we cannot allow things like this to happen. If you know of this and you turn a blind eye you are complicit with this. You are breaking a Torah command. If any Torah channels out there are still going along with this hallelujah scriptures thing, you're complicit with it. If you guys know that the hallelujah scriptures shakes people down, extorts their money, steals from them, and you still send people to them and extort them, you are part of this crime and you will be judged by our creator. Have a good day. I'm out.